So I'm joined now by Monica Bickert, VP of Global Policy Management for Facebook. Monica, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me on. So Monica, you're responsible for everything at Facebook when it comes to content. That includes fake news. That also includes all sorts of hate speech that's been used to incite violence all over the world. What do you say to criticism that Facebook hasn't done enough to tamp down on the hate speech, particularly in places like Myanmar, where there's been a genocide tied back to communication on Facebook? Well, first let me be clear, there's absolutely no place for hate speech or incitement to violence or any of that on Facebook, and we have very clear rules against it. Now, we're not always perfect at finding that content and removing it, although there's a lot that we've done in the past few years to get better. A big part of that is talking to real groups on the ground, people in communities, community leaders, and hearing from them what are the new trends? What are they worried about in terms of safety? And then working with our engineers and our content reviewers to build the tools to find that content and remove it. You may have these rules in place, but that hasn't prevented Facebook from being used to incite violence in places all over the world, whether it's India or Myanmar or countries in Africa. Does this mean you're not enforcing these policies well enough? We're working hard to enforce them, and we've actually started putting out numbers on what that enforcement looks like. So in the last quarter, we've actually removed three million, nearly three million posts for containing hate speech. Now, this is a big site. We've got more than two billion people regularly using Facebook around the world, and about 87% of them are outside the United States. So when you think about what hate speech looks like in Myanmar, in Sri Lanka, in anywhere, in any country in the world, you've got to think about different trends in different languages. But can you ensure that Facebook is not used to incite genocide again, the way it has been in Myanmar? It's certainly something that we're working hard to prevent. In fact, we commissioned a human rights assessment from an independent group in Myanmar to understand what we can do to make sure that we're doing better there. We've had teams going out to the region, meeting with civil society groups and safety experts on the ground so that we can make sure we're building the right tools. Now, I will say, in the past half, or I'm sorry, in the past quarter, our engineers have built tools that are focused on finding hate speech in Myanmar, and now the majority of hate speech we remove in Burmese, we're finding ourselves before anybody has flagged it. There has been a lot of criticism of Facebook's handling of these issues being slow to react, not just in your field, but also in issues of privacy and just transparency about what's going on at the company. Do you feel like the company has the right management in place to address all of its challenges? I do. And, and really, here's the bottom line. Even from a business standpoint, if people don't trust Facebook, they're not going to come and use it. Making sure that we maintain the trust of our community is just a foundation for us. We have a uh, rigorous privacy process that's overseen by our chief privacy officer, and I do have a lot of faith in that team. Uh, and in terms of Mark and Cheryl, do you think they'll both stay in their roles? They've both said they're going to, and I have to say that they're wonderful to work with.